Hey, a pleasant good evening, everyone. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick preview to the Boston Bruins and Philadelphia Flyers games that, by the way, for people that do not know, is over on TNT and not NBC Sports Philadelphia this evening with the Wednesday night game on TNT. Subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget at the end if you enjoy the content. Let's get right into it as the Flyers play the 1-0 Bruins, as the Flyers, of course, won 0 and one losing to the Canucks there in the OT, and then, of course, uh, beating the Kraken, a competitive Kraken team in the second game and really taking it to the Kraken. And I did a recap on that game if you want to go back and check that out. But when it comes to tonight's game, the Flyers are going to put Marty Jones. It's going to be the debut of Martin Jones in net for the Philadelphia Flyers. Of course, we have connections with what made him, when he went from the Kings to the Bruins, then to the um, Sharks, what made him the goalie he was. We have the goalie coach here in Delabas, so maybe that'll help him out, and that'll help him to be kind of become a just solid, groovy backup goaltender at this point of his career. That's just a nice, steady Eddie backup that does what he has to do to at least the degree of basically what Moose did for us, or, or, or a little bit better, maybe even like he gets a little bit hot again and starts showing himself again, like how Cam Talbot did years out when he was um, able to actually get ample playing time for that point of his career, not overtaxed like he did in Edmonton. Now he's revived his career. So maybe we'll be able to do that with Morton Jones. Who knows? But either way, he gets his debut tonight. But the Bruins, their projected lineup, they obviously they have the three stars you got to watch out for all year and every year, which is Brad Morshan, Patrice Bergeron, and David Posenok. I don't care about age. When it comes to Marchand and Bergeron, those guys just keep producing and putting up points up to this point. Especially Bergeron, who Marchand's in his earlier 30s. Bergeron's now in his mid-30s and is still kicking butt no matter what. Plus, they brought in, they well, well, first of all, they have Charlie Coyle, Craig Smith, and Taylor Hall as a second line. Of course, Taylor Hall is a key player to watch as well. But they have Eric Hawa now, which really solidifies the center core, losing David Krejci was a big loss. Eric Hawa was a pretty underrated player with Nick Foligno and Jake DeBrus, so that was a good thing to bring in. Plus, their fourth-line center is a guy that Vegas, of course, figured out was really a name that not many people knew until Vegas had him, and Tomas Nosek, and then Carson Kuhlman and Trent Frederick down there, who they got, of course, from the Martin Jones trade, actually, that went to Boston, or Boston to LA, and then they were able to pick Trent, Trent Frederick, so that's how that ended up happening. Derek Forbutt, Charlie McAvoy is the defense line, Mike Riley, Brandon Carlo for the second, and then Matty Grizzlick and Connor Clifton is the third, with Jeremy, the young killer Jeremy Swayman in that. He... Normally for young goalies, this is still what you want to do. You want to have the shooting mentality we had last game. You want to bombard him, obviously. But normally for young goalies, I would say when they're inexperienced and just been in the league for a handful of games, you want to just get the shots on net like Broussard did of last game from the corner just to try to throw them off their game. That's not the case with Swayman. He's been so locked in since he got into the league. It's kind of like how hot Carter Hart was when he first came up. You can't just shoot it on net because he's a young and experienced goaltender still adjusting to the NHL, or when it's foreign guys still just to the NHL and North America as a whole. You can't be shooting it from all those angles because he will stop those. He's a guy you got to get in front of the net. You have to have that good net front presence. You have to play physical in front of him and block off his sight lane. Then you're going to be able to score on swimming because he plays very calm, cool, collected, just like we saw Carter did when he came up. And he doesn't really look phased out there at all when it comes to being a really still a rookie since he only played a handful of games last year. So in my eyes, I would say he would still, especially with the shortened season, be considered a rookie. So he's a guy that's playing well above his uh, years, that's for sure, to start his career thus far. And then the Flyers, as I said, we're going to have Martin Jones in that. The fight central Nick Sealer, he will be scratched tonight, but that's no problem because that's because the great other pounder and slasher, not actually getting slash penalties, but just slashing in terms of like being physical against players. Rasmus Ristulainen is back tonight, and he's going to be on the second line defense with Travis Sanheim. Keith Yandel then is going to be with Justin Braun again, which is how it was, even though he did play solid, filling in a couple games for Sealer, which is exactly what you want Nick Sealer to be able to do as a seventh defenseman, fill in well and do what he has to do, and that's what he did. And then Provorov and Ellis is the first line. Fourth line is Nicholas Albe Kubel, Nate Thompson, and welcome to the team, Zach McEwen, as he's going to be in his first game. Hopefully, we even have a fight tonight against the Boston Bruins, since we know he likes to do that. Then you got Oscar Lindblom, Scott Lawton, and James Van Riemsdyk as the third line. Joel Fairby, Derek Broussard, and Atkinson, of course, staying together. Broussard, Brass has come out like a bat out of hell this year. Giroux, the other guy who's come out like a bat out of hell, centered with Chicago. Center is Couturier, and then the winger is Konechny on that line, who's also played very good 
early this season. So the key for the Flyers would just be <clears throat> they come out great in the first two periods of each game. They kept that pace going, obviously, against the Kraken. The Bruins have only played. They only played the game they won against the Stars this far. So you actually do have two games to one when it comes to the Bruins. So you should be a little bit sharper playing a little bit more hockey. They just got to come out like they did against both of these teams to start, but play the game like they did against the Kraken. Now, don't get me wrong. Playing the Bruins, you're going to have to do a lot more in order to keep that pressure up. The Kraken, like I said, are a competitive team and a team that's going to stay competitive because of the guys they drafted. The Bruins have guys that are going to be in the Hall of Fame in the future on their roster in Marchand and Bergeron. And so, I mean, that that makes a difference, obviously. You're going to have to really push the ante and be more aggressive against the Bruins even than a Kraken team. But if you play with that pace and you play with that shooting mentality, and you play kind of like Cam Atkinson and others talk about it for the game, and that very good togetherness, and TK talked about it, like realizing um, you have to sometimes just play together more than kind of like just run ahead of the play and do that, even if your speed allows that. Their team is all about kind of staying together with each other and being in a good groove, and that's what I really like to hear. So if they do that tonight, the Flyers have as good a chance as any to be able to beat this Bruins team. Obviously, I do not think this is going to be a score. Like the cracking game, I feel like against the Bruins, hopefully in a lesser goal total, but this will be more of a game like Vancouver where it's competitive and somebody might go ahead by one or two goals. You got to come back, then it goes to an OT, and then you figure out who wins it there. Hopefully it doesn't go to a damn shootout. But I feel like this will be a very competitive game to the end. I feel like Martin Jones, who by the way doesn't have squeaky clean stats against um, the Bruins, Hart doesn't either. So this was kind of just pick your poison here and put it. I think they're just going to give Hart the better team. That's projected this year in the Florida Panthers, believe it or not. Yes, they're projected to be a better team than the Boston Bruins by many. So they're going to put him in against the Florida Panthers, and then we'll roll with Martin Jones tonight. Just keep that aggressiveness up. Keep that physicality up. If you bring that fighting touch that we brought last game to the crack into the Bruins, that will be a great thing to see as well. And I think the Flyers will really be able to kind of supplant themselves and be able to kind of just not cruise through the game like they did last game, but keep that aggression up. And as long as you keep that fight up as well in terms of actually taking on anybody and not backing down with the Bruins, you'll be perfectly fine and be able to compete and be able to win this game, in my opinion, as well, even with the backup Martin Jones in. Because sometimes when backups are in, that also amplifies the defense to even play more aggressive when it comes to hitting people and being able to get in the shooting lane. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that tonight as well. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Go Flyers. Let's beat them damn Bruins. Subscribe down below or up above if you enjoy the content. And let's go Flyers. Bring that bring-it-to-broad energy to the Bruins. Peace.